At ASH this year, um, I presented the long-term overall survival update on oral azacitidine in patients with acute myeloid leukemia in first remission after intensive chemotherapy. And uh, this was an updated of uh, the phase three study, uh, which was uh, performed. So the Quasar AML001 study uh, investigated the role of oral azacitidine uh, versus placebo as maintenance therapy. And this was conducted in 472 patients aged 55 years and older. And these people were in first remission. They had had in induction chemotherapy with or without consolidation therapy. And the physicians did not consider these patients candidates for allogeneic stem cell transplant. The study uh, involved a one-to-one -one randomization of oral azacitidine at a dose schedule of 300 milligrams for 14 days each cycle. And the aim of this was to enable oral azacitidine to be delivered over an extended schedule of 14 days compared to the conventional seven-day injectable regimens. Furthermore, the greater convenience of these oral, this oral delivery formulation allowed many patients to receive as a cytidine for very long periods of time. For instance, one third of patients were still on therapy after two years. So the oral azacitidine quasar AML001 study results have been previously uh, published, showing that the median overall survival with oral azacitidine was improved from 15 to 25 months. However, we did note in the first analysis that the tails of the two survival curves uh, came together beyond 48 months. And despite a median follow-up of three and a half years in that study, one quarter of the population uh, was still alive and in survival follow-up. And so the aim of the current analysis uh, was to do another examination of the overall survival in this study with an additional one year of extra follow-up uh, in all patients. And so the current analysis now has a median follow-up of 52 compared to 41 months. The median survival for the oral azacitidine um, was unchanged. However, in this new analysis, the tails of the two survival curves showed substantially greater separation and did not touch or come together or cross at any time. And so with this new analysis, we observed that at three years, overall survival in the azacitidine arm was improved from 28 to 37% and almost 10% improvement in three-year survival. And at five years, the oral azacitidine arm had a survival of 26 versus 19%, a 7% absolute improvement in survival at five years. The next thing we did was to look at the characteristics of these patients uh, that survived for more than three years to define what were the characteristics of long-term survivors receiving oral azacitidine. What we found was that uh, long-term survival was associated with uh, patients being slightly younger, uh, less likely to have adverse cytogenetic risk, and more likely to have the NPM1 mutation. It did not make any uh, difference whether patients received more or less consolidation therapy in terms of whether they were in the long-term survival uh, group. For patients in the um, oral azacitidine arm with long-term survival, uh, the median age was 67. Uh, the proportion of patients with adverse cytogenetic risk was 6% compared to 19% of patients that had less uh, less survival, and the frequency of NPM1 mutation in this long-term survival group was 45% compared to 19% of patients that didn't survive beyond uh, three years. Furthermore, uh, we noted that uh, patients uh, in the oral SSI down with long-term survival also had less uh, flow MRD positivity at study entry. And furthermore, being on therapy, there was a greater chance of the patients becoming MRD negative on treatment. And so uh, as an example, uh, at study uh, entry, uh, the proportion of people uh, with uh, MRD positive was 35% in the long-term survival group compared to 48% of patients that didn't survive beyond three years. And the proportion of patients with long-term survival who became MRD negative in the oral azacitidine arm was 76% compared to only 22% of patients that didn't um, uh, survive beyond three years. The key difference between the two arms was in fact the proportion of patients that became uh, uh, MRD negative 
And uh, overall, in the oral as a cytogen arm, this occurred in uh, 37% of patients compared to only 19% in the placebo arm. And so we feel that conversion to MRD negativity, uh, the higher proportion of patients that achieve this was responsible for the longer term improvement in uh, overall uh, survival. And so our conclusions from this new analysis um, are that within it, one year of uh, additional follow-up, the maintenance oral as a cytidine in patients with AML in first remission after intensive chemotherapy and not candidates for allogeneic stem cell transplant, that uh, the overall long-term survival was uh, confirmed in this updated analysis, and that the characteristics of long-term survivors were that uh, patients had a lower frequency of adverse cytogenetic risk and a higher frequency of NPM1 mutation. And uh, so we hope that this uh, updated analysis will be useful information to clinicians uh, considering uh, patients for maintenance therapy. And uh, we hope that uh, this further information will consolidate uh, the use of uh, oral acetone as maintenance in this patient population.